Okay, the the reason um, the reason behind my resignation, I accepted the, the offer to serve as PRO on a number of principles and on and a number of ideologies. But in the progression of work, in the course of distance, it appeared that the matters were degenerating, and as a result, they were not in consonance with the principles. Exactly. Exactly. The, exactly. And so, um, in an attempt for me not to have um, a conflict of interest, I had to recuse myself from the administration and then um, look How for. It, would, it, it arose in respect of the fact that um, the happenings, the concurrences, did not match my principles. So, for example, let me um, try and give an illustration. There's no conflict I, I want to, I want to cite an example to, I want to cite an example to establish the fact I, I was making earlier, with respect to the matter of um, conflict of interest. Um, let us assume, for example, that an individual believes, as part of integrity, things to be done with laid-down procedures. And then that same individual is in a circle where things are done with no records to lay down procedures. Now, in that respect, you realize that the ideology of the person is not tangential to what is happening. And so you would have the responsibility of either cotoing to what is happening or protecting your ideology. And that in itself, it's, it's not exactly comfortable. So in, a, in an attempt to move away from the unpleasantries, yes, of, of ideologies, because if the ideologies I believed in are not... Resignation, let me um, state that it's the last point of call if all other remedial measures are not duly exhausted. Resignation becomes the very last point of call. So in the instance of my resignation as PRO, I attempted to exploit other alternative measures which were not um, fruitful in essence. They didn't bring anything material to bear. So I had to resort to the very last option of a resignation. And so that is the, the, the issue of last um, consent. How, after you resign, how would you serve students? Okay, after, okay. yes, it's very clear. Yeah. Yes. So, how you Mr. Chairman, please, we, we have submitted the, we have submitted the relevant documents, we have submitted the relevant documents that would necessitate the endorsement of the group, but, but let me indicate that um, the registration of any club or association on campus, it's a process, it's a procedural engagement. And so it doesn't come in, in an instance. And so it's very, very um, gradual, stage by stage. And so once we keep um, engaging the office of the Dean of Students and it keeps us, um, it keeps giving up feedback, we can only expect that at the end of the day, we would receive the appropriate endorsement and then operates within the remits of the school's regulations. And so, in effect, I did not deviate from um, being PRO. I have also um, offered my services as a corporate MC to the SRC without a charge, even when I, I resigned. Uh, uh, I want two questions from you. Page 81, Article 66 of the SRC Constitution, invest in the PRO, the um, invest in the PRO, the mandate of invest in the public public relations officer. Um, the mandate of acting as the individual who is charged with the responsibility of um, handling information and by far communication of the Student Representative Council. Now, in addition to that, 
the, the public relations officer is also the press and page, article 66, page 81. Yes, the public relations officer also doubles as the press and information secretary of the SRC. So, for example, um, if you check Article 18, which which guarantees the the organisation of presidential programs such as um, press. Yeah, it's, it's part of the answers. Okay, so um, apart from apart from serving as the chief, um, apart from serving as the chief linguistic code of the SRC, the PRO is in effect um, the press and information secretary of the SRC. And also, he has oversight responsibility in the management of um, Radio Universe as well. So in general, anything that has got to do with communication and information is the work of the PRO. Now, the second question on my personal evaluation of the current SRC administration. Um, let me first of all indicate that um, in a typical examination setting, it is very unfair to begin to assess the efforts of the candidate when the examination is still in progress. It is after the end of the examination that you can have um, a complete compilation of the efforts of the candidate and then you grade him as such. That, however, does not mean that I do not have an opinion on... And then you have 30 minutes to answer all the questions. And it's left with four questions for you to answer. And it's left with five minutes for you to answer these four questions. It's not possible for you to answer them. I want to be back. 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 Well, that depends. That is, that is very true, but all of that depends on the nature of the question. You would appreciate that if... Exactly, you may, you may tempt to may tempt her to shade a number of things. Because, I believe so, because as at now, there is information that the budget that was even approved by the General Assembly is yet to be expended and most of their projects have been captured in the budget. And if the money ha has not been given, why, do I, why does anyone want to be prejudicial to judge them? Let them have the opportunity of the funds. Let them execute what they intend, what they purport to do. Subsequently, would have an overall evaluation of them. Then I would be able to pass a very informed remark on their performance. <laughs> Don't you think that the resignation of Shandong being the PRO uh, dragged the name of the SRC? Don't you think so? Okay, to go very straight. When you were answering, Shandong was answering his questions. We were holding the mics. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's my boss. Let me hold it. Now, now to go very straight to your question. One thing I believe that Shandov did, and he has explained just right now, is that he said in no uncertain doubt that there were conflict of interest in this regard. So what he did. In the way, I wouldn't say drag the name of the SRC down. Okay. Okay. Okay, just as he stated, I can't be in his shoes and I can't predictably say why exactly he resigned as PRO. But just as he retreated to me some time ago, that he resigned based on some issues of constitutionalities. And I believe that it was conflicting with his own interest and the interest of the SRC as well. How? Is it from the um, operational setup of the SRC was not necessarily to come and become 
a critic of the SRC. I mean, yeah, he, he did say that, but that was one of the many reasons. I want to state the others as well. The point I the point I am making is um, is very simple. I stepped out so that I would have the independence of mind to be able to um, actually express my objective opinions on misgivings about the um, Student Representative Council. That is very true, but exactly that is very true. But then, um, comparatively, comparatively, between between staying out and staying in to criticize, I feel staying out to criticize is is a, is a better option, because obviously you cannot live in your father's house and then be criticizing your father when your father is the very same person that fits you. When you gain independence and you move out of his quarters, I believe you can exercise a more independent mind more than when you are in his house.